There are many ways to play against Pirk defense, but one I'm going to introduce you um, on this DVD is the easiest to learn and easiest to play. This is the uh, strategical line uh, that uh, is easy to understand for any level of a <coughs> player. Uh, interesting that uh, there are some uh, sharp variations, but when we do uh, get involved in sharp variations, most of the time they are disastrous for black. It's very comprehensive, very, uh, very playable, and very promising system to play against peer defense. But sometimes when your opponent transposed from peer defense to a modern. There are interesting ways to play against modern that is also on this DVD that a lot of times it transposes to peer and it's also very easy to learn and um, easy to understand. So get yourself comfortable and learn how to play easy way against one of the major openings in chess. Pirk defense e4 d6 d4. Now Pirk defense is typical uh, way for black to play to play knight f6 and g6. Now however when black plays d6 and we go d4 they have there is another way of play some kind of a variety of peer defense. Knight f6, we will go knight c3. And now sometimes they do play something like c6 here. The idea of the c6 move is if we play knight f3 to play bishop g4 and later on to play e6 and d5 without fianchettoing black bishop on g7. So later you will see that against the regular peer defense we play system with a4 and knight f3 so on c6 move we would go a4 because we want to be consistent with our plan. So we go a4 preventing b5 in the future and also bishop g4 now is not a very good move because white can simply play f3 now bishop is hanging on uh, g4 black is not going to go back bishop c8 so on on bishop to h5 we can even play very aggressively g4 and on bishop g6 h4 and now if black plays h5 g5 and after knight to d7 just play bishop e3 and queen d2 later on try to go f4 and f5 this is a really bad position for black and uh, I don't expect anyone to play like this so we just played a4 and now black has a dilemma. Now if they go g6, then we will play knight f3. And we're going to transpose to a regular pair we're going to discuss. So besides g6, there is no other reasonable way for black to play. For instance, if they go knight d7, okay, we continue with knight f3. Now g6 is not as good now because we may go e5 and when black takes on e5 and we take on e5 you see that knight on f6 does not have any good squares to go well where can knight go now suppose knight goes to g4 then we can go e6 or even bishop f4 but i like e6 better now, black has to take on e6, 
and they have absolutely horrible position after bishop c4. You see their uh, pieces are not developed, king is open, and we can castle next and go queen e2. We have very solid advantage. So you don't expect anyone uh, to play um, G knight d7 and after knight f3 g6. So they, if they play knight d7 and we went knight f3, they should go e5 now. But if they go e5, what we can do, we cannot now immediately punish uh, uh, black for this kind of play. We can simply go bishop e2 and black goes bishop e7 again. If black goes g6, we are not going to discuss it here because that will be 100 transposition to the regular pure defense, the main variation which we will discuss a little bit later. So on bishop e7, we simply castle, black castles, and what should, how should we play with white? I would go h3 to prepare putting bishop on e3, because we don't want to go bishop e3 and black bothering us with knight g4. So there are two ways to play. You can go h3, and after rook e8, you can go bishop e3. And on bishop f8, you can simply take on e5 and go knight d2 and knight c4. This is a reasonably good way to play for white. However, we have another alternative which may be little better than this. We don't develop bishop on e3 at all. We go b3 and when black goes rook e8, now we develop bishop to a3 or maybe even b2. Well, our plan is to play queen d2, rook a to d1. It's just simple development and putting pressure on the black's center. We just develop all pieces and play like a regular chess, bishop on c4, rook on e1, and so on. That's what our plan is. Uh, the reason why we don't analyze variations here, because since black is passive, they don't have any way of um, uh, for any kind of activity here. So after e4 and d6, we go d4, knight f6, and knight c3. So let's go with the g6 move. Well, actually, before we go to g6, there is one other little thing here. What if black goes e5. Now this is very simple. Here this we can be we could be prepared for this in a matter of seconds. So what we do simply we take on e5, black takes, we take the queen, black takes the queen, uh, now we go simply bishop c4 attacking the f7 pawn, and normal move for black is bishop e6, we just take on e6, take. Now, I don't think there are too many volunteers to play this position for black. Well, white has everything black has, plus white has much better pawn structure. Pawn on e5 will always need protection of the minor piece. Meanwhile, we can go f3 and our e4 pawn will never need protection. What you have to do is just simply play bishop e3, followed by f3, knight e2, king f2, rook d1. It's a very primitive, very elementary chess that double the rook like it's like you just learn chess and you only know the basic rules. Just follow them. Develop the pieces and put the rooks on open files. That's all you need to know. The pieces will come off the board and you will see the weaknesses of e6 and e5 pawns. 
So now let's go back and that's now we entering the main variations of PIRC defense. So the way it's gonna work is this e4 d6 d4 knight f6 knight c3 and g6 this is the main move we go knight f3 uh, i don't think you can expect here any other move than simple bishop g7 and here the system that i recommend highly recommend is h3 move well at first, it seems like it's against the basic chess principles that we make in the opening part of the game, uh, the mo mo many moves with a pawn, especially with a rook pawn. But the difference here between uh, regular positions and this position is black developed passively. There is not going to be any confrontation um, of pieces in next few moves. So loss of a tempo with move h3 is not as relevant because when black castles now that's why we wanted to play h3. We want to put the bishop on e3 stopping knight g4. And now black has to do something about this position. Black has to do something about this position they can go for e5 to uh, somehow balance their pawn presence in the center. The plan is e5, not e5 right away. So they can go knight d7, e5. They can play knight c6 and e5. Uh, they can play b6 and bishop b7. Or they can play uh, c5 and after d6 queen a5. Black has various continuations and I don't think black can equalize in any of these cases. So now in this position it's black's move. So let's look at black's possibilities in some random order. Suppose c5. This is not a good move um, because white simply takes on c5 and obviously black is not going to retake because then we can exchange queens and simply win this pawn on c5. Uh, so the idea of c5 move is a typical for this type of positions after dc black goes queen a5 creating knight takes e4 threat. So then we have very strong move knight to d2 and uh, when black plays pawn takes pawn we can simply go knight b3 and uh, this position is absolutely awful for black because if they go queen b4 they're only going to get in more trouble. And on queen c7, we can simply take pawn on c5 and after rook d8, go bishop d3. We just have an extra pawn for absolutely no compensation for black. So this is not a good way to play for uh, black. Uh, so move c5 is really a bad move in this position. So now there are other moves. C6 is one of the main moves and we will definitely discuss it. Now let's look at moves like A6, B6, Knight C6. Well suppose let's start with Knight C6. Now move Knight C6 is designed obviously for E5 continuation. So we play Bishop B5 which does not allow black to go E5 because we can simply take on c6 and win the e pawn. You see, after b takes c, d takes e. So then, if black simply plays a6, then we can take this knight, pawn takes, and we castle. This is very good position for white. Again, blessed 
black does not have activity here. If black goes rook b8, I can simply go b3. That doesn't bother me at all. Black cannot go e5 or c5, because e5 simply loses a pawn, and the c5 we can simply take on c5. That also loses a pawn. So black has really problem uh, playing here. For If they go knight d7, we can go queen d2, then we can try to play bishop h6, and basically your plan is to go then rook e1 and rook d1. It's absolute primitive position. Uh, for example, we just go queen d2, knight d7, queen d2. Suppose black goes e5. Now, and you don't know what to do. Should we take or should we not take? Uh, you don't need to know because you can go either way. We could play rook d1 and we are doing fine. And we could take d takes e uh, when we are doing fine. They are equally good moves. On knight takes e5, well let's look at this position. Knight takes e5, bishop takes e5, and bishop d4. Now we Black's dark square bishop is strong on long diagonal, so we want to exchange it. So bishop takes d4, queen takes d4. You see why it has more space. Now we're going to put one rook on d1. We'll put one rook on e1 and try to go e5. We have very nice position, nice pawn structure. Anytime on rook b8, we will play simply b3. We will be fine, and we have some pressure in the center. Okay, now that's how we play on knight c6 move. There is one more thing after knight c6, which, which we have to mention. If uh, black plays knight c6 variation after e4, d6, d4, knight f6, knight c3, g6, knight f3, bishop g7, h3, castle, bishop e3, and knight c6, bishop b5. Suppose they play bishop d7. Suppose they don't want to get um, double pawn. So we still castle, nothing changed on our end. And on e5, we can simply take on e5. Now this is very easy way to get clear, maybe small advantage, but clear advantage. So suppose black takes with a knight or with a pawn, that wouldn't make big difference. Okay, now we take on e5 and black must take on e5. Notice that black cannot take on b5 first because now, if we take knight, we take bishop. Uh, black takes our knight. So, but if we're gonna lose this knight anyway, so we might as well play knight takes f7, and we're gonna have a better position. After rook takes, we're attacking the queen, and on rook takes f7, we can take on b5. We have a better position here. So, after knight takes e5. Black will go d takes e, and this is, we play bishop takes d7, and now it's better for black, better to take with a knight. Well, actually, if they take with a queen, it won't make much difference. Knight, then we can simply go queen to e2 and rook on d1. Now, let me explain, your bishop is a lot better than bishop on g7. Bishop on e3 is much stronger piece. Besides, we are a lot quicker to get on d-file. And once we get on d-file, we're going to start doubling on this d-file. And black has to lose a lot of tempos trying to make it. Well, if they took with a queen, we can do the same thing. We can take the queen, knight takes... Now black also has to worry about after rook fd1 and rook fd8, they have to worry about moves like knight b5 attacking the a7 pawn and c7 pawn. So 
and on top of everything we can still go rook d3 and rook d1 remember that in a pure defense unless black make makes really bad mistake white is not entitled to huge advantage but they always have better position and better prospects for middle game because their pieces will be standing a lot better.